Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and in my channel I talk about plants in my life and journey with my plants. And welcome to my favorite place inside my house, inside my Mars Hydro grow tent. Um, I've promised to make this video for you guys for a while now, um, how I've converted my grow tent into um, growing vertically instead of using shelves. And I am really, really loving the way I could access my grow tent now. Everything is hanging on the, on the sides of the grow tent. So I could really just like step in the grow tent and check out each plant without like trying to reach to the back of the shelves and then like knocking things over. Sorry, this guy looks a little bit like it might need some water. Anyways, um, I'm, I've already done a video going over this um, moss wall with you guys. I'll put a link to that video in the description box so we won't be going through those plants again. Although, check out how sun's dress. This watermelon uh, movada or dicheria looks so beautiful and these beautifully sun stress. Um, Hoya Marilia because it's really close to the top of the grow tent. Um, anyway, so yes, I won't be talking about this wall. I'll just be going over the grids and the Hoyas that I have hanging on the grids. Um, and maybe just a little bit of the aeroids underneath. How about that? Um, yeah, my throat kind of hurts today and um, I am really not very good at handling pain when I have these like inflammation. I kind of feel super sensitive to the pain that even like I feel pain in my face as well. So that's why I kind of also don't want to show my face this morning. So I'm just gonna try my best to go through as many plants with you guys as possible. And then also I will um, put links to the products that I use, uh, like the grids and the hooks and everything in the description box below. So if you're interested, the information will be all there. Um, all right, so why don't we just start in this corner from the like uh, la, 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 the right-hand side of the grow tent. So I hung this, um, I think it's an eight inch or eight inch a basket of Dicheria, um Orintha, I think. I'll, uh, I'll double check that, that I got the name right um, in the corner here. I find that this guy actually doesn't really need really high light. So I just keep this one in the, in the corner. The leaves is actually much thinner than a lot of the other Dicheria. So this is where I'm keeping it. I am going to move uh, my Monstera elbow out of here and build it a little um, moss pole for it because it has put out its very first little leaf from um, being a little one leaf propagation. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so as you can see, hanging on the corner of the grow tent, I use S hooks to hang up this grid. Um, and then on the grid, I have these pots hang, hung on them. Um, I, c I don't really need the trellis anymore, but for some of the plants, I was too lazy to take down the trellis. Uh, so this Hoya Fusco Marginata is still trellis, because, um, and this is a hook that I'm using to hang them on the grid. Um, I find that a lot of the tendrils can just use the grid as, a, um, as their trellis, so they don't really need like extra support. Um, so I'll eventually take that out. And then next to the Fusco Marginata is the Hoya Patella, no, Patiae. I always get the two confused. Um, yeah, it has been sitting in here and it seems to have kept its tan, even though it's not really directly under the light anymore. Um, and it has a bit of a new tendril that, or a stamp that it's working on. And then next to that one is one of my favorite Hoyas, the Pubic Helix Jungle Garden. And this guy actually is getting a little bit of blush on the rims of its leaves from being just directly under the uh, grow light. See this one even is blushing a little bit more. Too. And this, um, the other tendril. This one has a, let me see, this peduncle 
has bloomed many times and the flowers are really big and beautiful and quite long lasting. So this is definitely a Hoya that, ooh, there's another pedonkel here as well. So this is, yeah, definitely a Hoya that I would recommend. It's a really, really good one. Um, and then kind of like stuck here in this corner is the Hoya Crisipi Teolata. Um, this is the non-splashy kind, which I think is really, really beautiful. Um, I had actually chopped all of its roots off on camera with you guys and rooted, rerooted it in pond and it's rooted really well in pond. Um, yeah. And then underneath I have a uh, Hoya Biakensis. I'm really hoping to get some splash back from this Hoya, but it just doesn't look to be the case. Yeah, but that's okay. Oh, hanging on this Dechetia, I have hung another Dechetia. I just moved this one here, actually. The Dechetia Ovada. Um, it's flowering right now. Really sweet. Here. Actually, the, the one on the moss wall is flowering right now, too. They just have the same flowering schedule. And then it's a little bit harder to see, but in the corner here, I have a Hoya Rangsang. Here, let me just try to touch it so you know which one I'm talking about. This is the Hoya Rangsang. I find it to be a really like difficult one for me. It grows really, really slowly for me. Um, and then in this corner, I have this um, Hoya, uh, is it Tanga Mus? Tanga Mus? I got this as a tray with Hoya Jungle Flowers and I really love it. And uh, it's rooted since she's given her to me. And there's this little tendril that it's working on. So hopefully not too long in the future, it will give me a new leaf. And then maybe I'll just take this guy off so we could get a better look at over here. And then I have, this is a Hoya, uh, let me see, new from my friend Maya. See, like it's got this long tendril that it's like, um, it just has the growth, uh, the trowel, uh, this grid to work with. And it looks like there's a little peduncle that it's working on. Underneath the Hoya Pacific Piolata Splash, I find that this is a Hoya that doesn't really like a lot of light. It could get easily like bleached out from, from the light. That's why I'm keeping it in this corner. And it's got these like this long tendril with lots of aerial root. I think I should go a little bit faster. What time is it? It's uh, 8.09. My husband has a meeting at 9 o'clock and I'm kind of taking his host, uh, office hostage to film. So I gotta go a little bit faster. And then this is a Hoya CVN. I love this Hoya so much. I think the Venetian is absolutely gorgeous. And it also has a little fresh tendril up in there. And then let's see. This is a Hoya Comingiana. I love the growth pattern of this Hoya. I think it's really, really stunning. And then this is a Hoya Forbetsii. Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah. So it has, um, this is one of the new imports since last September and it has this is the newest leaf and it has this long tendril and it looks like it's working on another new leaf but I don't know sometimes new leaves are so hard to say whether they're gonna stay or they're gonna go so I'm always not holding my breath with Hoya new leaves and then this is the Hoya prick tie which I think is so stunning um, here. The, this is its newest leaf. The Hoya new leaves are just so dark and so glossy. It's so pretty. Um, and then I have a Hoya Australis Lisa here. This is another Hoya that I just really can't really get the care right. It's dying leaf. And then underneath, this is a Hoya Joko. And she also has a really long tendril. I'm just gonna tuck it in the grid. And then let's see, oh, in this corner, 
I have the Hoya, hold on, Hoya Forbetsiae Cross Dekiae. I had to recently treat this one with root mealybug and I'm really worried about losing it. You know what's a really scary thing to see on Hoyas is yellowing around this area. When you have yellowing around this area, it almost means that the Hoya is not gonna make it. It's usually stem rot, um, but the leaves are firm, so I'm still holding out hope, although it's not a guarantee, even if the leaves are firm. If this area is yellowing, then we have a big problem. And this is the Hoya Wilbergraves um, China Anoid. It has um, not grown for so long. Oh, look guys, I think this, I need to treat this one too. Look at this, this right attached to the root, these white fuzzy stuff, that's root mealybug. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna take this one out and then I'm going to rinse off all its um, substrate and then soak it in um, hot water around 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. And if, if you like, I, I also would add a little bit of maybe insecticidal soap and soak it a couple of times with like that temperature of water to kill the eggs. This is the Hoya meridithii. It has been dormant for a really long time, but um, hold on. There is some activity um, on the stem. So like on the top, there's a little bit of new growth. This is the Hoya Bourguet. <laughs> I have a resident spider that lives in that pot. I don't know if I could sh I'll be able to show him to you guys. You see there? Oh yeah, he's on the, on the leaf in here. It's really hard to see, but should we name him? He's so cute. I love seeing little spiders and how they like find this inappropriate environment for them to, to live. I really like that. Um, this is a, a regular Hoya polynera. Why do uh, polyneras hate me? I don't know, but uh, I just have not given up on them. I hope I just keep hoping one day they're going to change their mind about me. I and I have been trying to like figure out like changing different environments for them, but I have yet to get them to grow for me. Well, um, this is a ooh, Hoya. I can't maybe GPS seven two four zero. Um, it's a little cutting. And this is Bankpla, I think, from um, Hoya Paulus. Then this is the Hoya Patella. This is the mother plant. I have a cutting that I have uh, planted into like a moss wall somewhere. And then another Hoya that just feels really like hard to take care of. Hoya, um, I'll put the name on the screen, hard for me to say. This is one of my favorite Hoyas, the Mitrata round leaf is so cute and then i have um another favorite of mine hoya golden eye over here someone commented about how it reminds them of um, um dragonfly wings and i agree i think they are really like whimsical i want to take it off and show you guys the whole plant This is the newest leaf. And like the venation is just so stunning. Maybe I'll hang it on a higher place there. On the very bottom, who's not getting much light at all, is my Hoya Minibel Splash. This guy, I'm just so um, not wanting it to get bleached at all. So it's getting super, super dapple light. And then also same thing with the uh, Hoya Mattel Splash, super, super dapple light. And there's like a little bit of new leaf, I think it's working on. I have uh, got this dollar store plank and then mounted some moss and plants on here. But I don't know, I think it's a mistake because look how gross this molding situation is. And yeah, but I don't really, I, because some plants are still growing, so I don't really want to 
move them like this Hoya Bella um, variegata is growing and this Hoya Bella elbow marginata is growing too and then I think this Hoya is really firm and it's really like liking it there and these anthuriums I've gotten bigger and look finally I'm getting some venation from from this baby um yeah so I just have been um, not kind of wary about moving um, things around, taking them out from here, but I should eventually because uh, it's definitely not ideal for them. Another thing that's growing is this Hoya chinguinensis that's growing kind of under the shadow of everything. But yeah, I just need to find like a better plank for it for this guy. Ooh, another Hoya that's growing is this Hoya. Um, is a Kentiana or Weyedii variegated. But uh, it, there is a new stem in there. Can you see? There you go. So cute, hey? This is one of my favorite Hoyas. It's just so beautiful. All right, I already seen you. You need to make room. Excuse me. <laughs> him a little bit over there tuck you over there all right um this is a hoya well liniana 152 um i had to reroute this and i think one of the cutting is rerouted because the leaves are firmer and then this one is still kind of wrinkly so it's not rerouted yet yeah you'd be surprised sometimes i just think oh my god it's taking so long it's not going to get rerouted but they actually do, um, even if it takes a long time, eventually they still would plump up. So you just have to be just a little bit patient about it. Unless, you know, there's root rot, then you have to also check on that too. <laughs> yeah, find balance. I have a um, com Hoya Compacta Moena, Moena, <laughs> Moena. Um, and then I have my Hoya Ghana. Gunangadeng here. It had a little bit of a new growth point here before. I had to also treat it, so uh, the new growth point dried up. So now we're back to hopefully square one, which means the pest has been <laughs> taken care of. But I don't know. But the leaves are really firm and it feels really healthy, so that's good. This is a Hoya Wilbergate. <laughs> Am I saying it wrong? Um, yeah, it's actually a really like easy grower. This is my fan that I'm keeping here. I find that I have to, it's like also a fine balance with keeping ventilation too much, then like everything dries out way quicker, way too quickly. And then too little, you know, then like little bits of mold could develop on top of like leaves. And also obviously it could lead to um rot as well i think stone dry out quick enough yeah again another fine balance um this is the latifolia elbow marginata she's also not been really uh, easy for me and i am still feeling like i haven't really figured out um, what it wants or maybe it's just not the time yet for it to uh, grow well you know some hoyas you just gotta wait for it to really like be established before they start um, be becoming easier. This is a Hoya Michelle, and it has this long stem that it's working on. Hopefully, it means new leaves. It um, has put out new leaves before and dropped them, so this one also I find it to be a little bit more difficult. And then I have my Hoya Viola um, over in here, one of my favorite Hoyas. It's uh, just like beautiful and like easy going. And like, I love how succulent it is. It's just really awesome Hoya. And then I have my little strawberry shake baby in here and a Hoya Chelsea um, in here as well. I feel like I saw some new leaves recently. Hmm. Maybe it has already dropped. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Anyways, I really love this one. 
and then my um, there is a Hoya Biensis hidden in here. Let me see if I could just take her out to show you guys. She is definitely one of my favorite Hoyas. But I think I also want to, like this one also has, look, issues. I'll have to treat this one as well. All right, let's go, guy. It's got a super long tendril, just. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull that out and put it aside and then um, take care of it once I'm done filming. All right, let's move over to this side. In this corner, I have my other Dushetia. I think this is Dushetia Jerry, but please don't quote me on it. Um, but I really love it. It's super cute. And yeah, I'm just a really big fan of Dushetia. Look at this um, new leaf over there. <laughs> Shiny and plump, so cute. And then another new leaf in there. I want to copy um, Kevin from Hakuna La Planta. Future Kevin, zoom in. Yeah, so future Amy, zoom in. Um, and then I have, what is that? Oh, the Hoya um, Crimson Queen. It's got so much white. So pretty. So like I have two varieties. One is this more like round shaped leaves and the other one is more like elongated leaves. Oh, I forgot the name of this. I think Kalamatan uh, Hoya. And then my Hoya David, is it David coming? So these were the new leaves and these were the new leaves. And ooh, look, new flowers. And of course, Millie bugs taking advantage. Hold on, let me just get it. All right, I got the Millie bugs, but like, look at how cute these plum flower buds are. I love them. This is a really um, lovely Hoya. And also I find that it's actually a bit of a, I guess I think it's a co-grower because a couple years now already that it has like grown new leaves and flower during the colder uh, season. Hanging, oh, look, another, I didn't even realize. Is that, yeah, yeah, that's from the same way, yeah. That's cool. Um, and then I have this Hoya. It's a cross between Hoya Jennifer and another Hoya, I don't remember. But she's really gorgeous. She was a much bigger Hoya when I first imported her, but then uh, I think she has some type of, um, maybe bacterial infection. So there was like lots of these red dots on her and I had to keep trim trimming her leaves. Um, this is so stunning, Hoya Russell, beautiful. And then this is a Hoya Marilia long leaf. Very stunning. Uh, don't remember, but oh, something like NS050, I think. I'll double check and, and write the correct name for you guys. This is a Hoya, uh, let me just double check the name. SPVL9. She is super adorable. Yeah. And then this is the Acuta Variegata. See, this is, um, it doesn't really get a lot of um, the ventilation, so it, has like a little bit of mold um, built up on her leaves. Um, she is really interesting. She has this like a really weird growth um, stem. Um, is it crested? I think my friend Maya told me. They used to be stuck together. Now they have like separated into a multiple different stems. It'll be so cool. And look, it goes all the way. There's a little bit of like leaf point here and it goes all the way here and it's still like separating. Isn't that so interesting? So yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, my Hoya Dekia is hiding in there in the little blush hearts. She is. And then I have this um, Reticillata splash growing in there. And then this is a, um, I think it's a Glabra. Let me see, no, UT0. Oh yeah, Glabra 
UT075. Um, and then this is a Hoya Irina hidden in here. What else? This is my one of my favorite Hoyas, the Hoya Larissa. I am air layering it. Um, and uh, hopefully, maybe do a tray with my friend, but only if it keeps growing because I don't want to. I have cut her a couple times and I always regret cutting her. Um, and then Hoya Wilbur Gaye. No, what am I saying? Hoya, oh, I don't remember her name. What? I'll put it on the screen, of course. Um, who else is here? Hanging um, on everything is my Hoya Vitellinoides. No, Vitellina. Again, also one of my very favorite Hoyas. It's so nice and it's so easy. It is just, yeah, highly recommend. And like she's bloomed also many times. There she is. So pretty. Um, let me see, who is this? I don't remember her name. I will put it on the screen again. Um, I'm kind of going all over the place, just like up and down, up and down. Let's just go up first and then we'll come back down. And this is a Hoya Patricii. I love this one of these new leaves. Um, and then Hoya CV Joy. Again, also like one of my favorite Hoyas. I love the shape of the leaves and the way it blushes in a really coral color. Don't mind this built up. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Um, and then this is a Hoya Banchai. Yep. And then up here, this is a Weimani round leaf. Very cool. And then I have my Hoya Rebecca here. Rebecca is not tanning. Maybe I need to move her to a different spot. Like she wants to, you can see the tip. Um, and then she has some, also some flower buds here. Um, and then this is, who is this? Let's see. AH, AH021. This is um, um, Bretonnier, who needs to be watered. Um, this is a Hoya Vitellinoides. Um, this is one of my favorite, Hoya Seri Gauensis. It just tans so beautifully. I wonder if my like freckles are getting intensified as I'm standing under the grow tent. Uh, I mean, grow light. And this is a Hoya, I think, 049, maybe. I'll double check. It's really pretty. And then hidden in here, we have the Pseudo Littoralis. So red, so beautiful. Oh, hi, yeah. Oh, my Susie Q is growing a new leaf. She's so cute. And then this is another Hoya Waimanii. No, this is another Hoya, uh, what is it? Mitrata. But the other one was a round leaf and this is not the round leaf one. And then I have, um, this is a Hoya, um, oh, Lois. It was an import and hasn't started to grow new leaves yet. I'm trying to mount this Dechetia to see if it'll bring it back to life, but I don't think it's rooted just yet, or if it will root, I'm not sure. Uh, this is a Hoya I got from Crystal Star Nursery. Her name, her name is Pandorata. Um, oh, this is a Hoya, uh, I think Waiatia. And uh, I've, this is the first time that I have been able to grow it um, kind of well. It's got some new growth and so pretty. I've had this Hoya actually, this is the third try. 
Um, the first couple of times they just kind of died on me. But I do love like this dark rim and yeah, I think it's very, very stunning. And then next to him, I have my Hoya Wilbur Graves. I'm also trying to grow this in a couple of different areas. One on this uh, thing in pond, yep, nice uh, roots. It's rerooted in pond. And then another one on this like moss wall, just in this corner. Yeah, I'm just curious to see of how they will respond. With this is a Hoya Finlaysonia chicken farm. Very cute. Um, well, now that I'm already squatted down, maybe I'll just go over the these ones first. This is a Hoya Joy Splash. And then, oh, this is just a Carnosa. Splashy Carnosa, I think. I don't remember. Um, and then this is Hoya uh, Gwen Guanensis. Yeah, Gwen Guanensis. Uh, and then, Incrustata, Hoya Incrustata. I have the Incrustata Moon Shadow, and this is just a green form. And I find the green form to be just like really, really easy going. Actually, the, I also have the Elbow Marginato type. type. Yeah, I can't even talk anymore. Uh, and that one has been really easy too. This is the Hoya Latifolia. Oh, let me climb up again. Oh, we forgot to see this Hoya Apatia Splash. She's doing well. And then this is the oh, regular Patsyai. No, what am I saying? Who is this? Is it Patsyai? Oh, you know what? This one is the Patsyai. And earlier when I said this is the Patsyai, no, it's actually Pentaflavia. So, sorry. Yeah, so this is the Patsyai um, Splash and this is the, the Patsyai. Um, just a regular green form and she's like pretty long so I tied her up on the trellis on the gridge and then this is a Finlaysonia and I think Dekii cross and I originally thought is this just like my Hoya um, what's her name Svalana but they do look a little bit different, so I'm not sure. Um, Hoya Jennifer. And uh, this side was sold to me as one cutting, um, Hoya Finlaysonia Splash. And then I also have another Hoya Finlaysonia, but I don't really know the exact like ID for this guy, but definitely one of my favorite Hoyas. So pretty. Am I missing anyone? I forgot to. This is the Hoya Hushkeliana pink. So pretty. Yeah, you know what, you guys? I've already taken up so much of everybody's time. And also, like, I want to get out of here for Jordan's meeting. So maybe we won't look at the aeroids today. I moved this one in here because I love this plant so much and it has never really done very well in the room environment so i'm gonna try uh in the grow tent and it's already putting out a little bit of a new growth there oh and another ambition of mine is to grow really big leaf micans so i'm growing these like baby ones from scratch with a moss pole to see if that would happen this is the hoya sarawak um yeah it's just really big so i'm not gonna hang it on the grid i'm just gonna let it sit on the floor the pink princess, I also just made the moss pool for. I'm excited for her. Um, oh, another thing I want to tell you guys is that, remember in my other video, I said maybe I'll move my Nangari tents in the grow tent. And then like immediately it just started to, this new leaf that it was taking forever to grow, just immediately started poking out. Is it not focusing? So um, yeah, I'm super happy about this. I hope you can, guys enjoyed this little quick tour. Um, I love my plants in here and I love visiting the grow tent. And um, I will see you guys soon again. Bye.